Okay, everyone. So the last topic for this week is the static contact analysis. We have uh, done a similar problem uh, that we are going to be doing now, uh, which uh, was uh, related with uh, the different types of contact between the two surfaces, including the bonded contact or the no penetration contact or the frictional contact. So in an assembly, we can define different kinds of contacts and then run the uh, simulation and also you know an animate it to uh, see the simulation is working uh, you know perfectly uh, in the way that we uh, want the simulation to run uh, based on the contact that we define for that particular assembly. All right, so uh, let's uh, download the parts uh, available on the canvas for this assembly. First thing what we're going to do is create an assembly and then uh, do the simulation by defining the uh, contacts. All right, so uh, I'm going to start with the new assembly. And in this new assembly, I'm going to um, uh, open the first part, which is the pin. There are basically three parts uh, for this assembly, the pin, the fork, and the plier jaw. Uh, and we're gonna start with the first part, which is the pin. So if you notice here uh, in parenthesis, the F letter comes, which means that this pin is fixed and it cannot be moved because that's the first part in the assembly. You cannot move the first part that you bring in the assembly because that uh, determines its, uh, uh, you know, the reference for the assembly. Okay, so after this, we're gonna bring in the um, next part into this uh, assembly. So let's go ahead and click on the assembly tab, click on the insert component, and this time we're gonna get the fork into this assembly. So let's get the fork in this assembly. And so what we're gonna do is first create the assembly between these two components, and then we will bring the plier jaw uh, into the assembly. So let's go ahead and create the sub-assembly first between these two components. And so for that, uh, I will click mate. Uh, but before that, I just want to quickly change the unit system because this problem is given in inches. So first thing that I'm going to do is before defining the mate is changing the unit system, system to inches. Uh, then click on the mate. And the first thing, you know, what I'm going to do is align their reference planes. So I'm going to expand this uh, feature manager uh, the, or the design tree and then select the front plane of the pin to be coincident with the uh, front plane of the fork. Okay, so that is how the uh, front planes are aligned um, which means that uh, they are symmetrical uh, with respect to one another click on this small check mark here the next plane that I'm going to do uh, the mate of is the top plane of the pin and the top plane of the fork so those two planes are now made coincident all right and then another assembly or the another mate that I'm going to be doing is uh, click on the right plane of the uh, right plane of the pin which is right there so that's the right plane of the pin and I'm going to click on this far end circular face of the fork but I'm going to use the distance feature in and then I'm going to use the distance of 3.35 inches which I have pre-calculated um, based on the geometry that I'm uh, having for the pliers jaws. So 3.35 inches distance and then click OK. Click on the check mark and that way now you have a fully defined system uh, because both these components are fully defined they cannot be moved. By the way this uh, particular uh, problem that we are doing for the static contact analysis uh, is given in chapter number 13 of uh, your textbook. So for those of you who have the textbook, you can uh, refer back to this chapter number 13 
uh, and then uh, rework on this problem. <coughs> Similarly, the first uh, part of this uh, week's topic, which was the axisymmetric analysis, is also given uh, in the chapter number 12, which uh, the title is 3D Thin Shell Analysis. So uh, you can again go back to that and uh, refer uh, to the topic one more time from the textbook. Anyway, so once we have uh, made the assembly of the fork and the pin, the next thing that we're going to do is insert component. And this time we're going to get the pliers jaw, click open. And we can first pin it here to make it visible. And then click on the graphics area a couple of times to bring the two instances of uh, the plier jaws and then click on the check marks so that way you don't have to keep on doing this uh, uh, one by one for the insert components of the plier jaw. All right so uh, we can worry about this part a little later. First let's fix one of the jaws here to the pin and create the relations with the fork. So the first thing uh, what I'm going to do is click on the mate and then align the uh, cylindrical surfaces of the pin and the plier jaw with one another. Uh, then click here to finish this mate. Then uh, the next mate that I'll be doing is click on this face of the uh, plier jaw and then select the bottom edge of uh, the fork and then click OK. All right. And then one last thing for this is to um, align the front plane of the pin with the this vertical plane of the uh, plier jaw. OK, so that way uh, the alignment is uh, perfectly symmetrical with respect to the front plane on the either side. All right, so that completes the uh, assembly of the first uh, plier jaw. And now we will uh, take a look at the second plier jaw. So uh, we first need to turn it around so that it is uh, you know, having the accurate alignment before we can start creating the mates. So let's go to um, move component, click on this drop down arrow, click on the rotate component and turn it around so that it orients perfectly the way we want it. And then I'm going to bring it on the other side of this assembly. <coughs> and just like previously, first thing I'm going to do is click on the mate click on this uh, cylindrical face of the pin and this inside hole of the plier jaw and then click OK. Just going to turn it a little bit and again very similar to the lower jaw I'm going to select the face of this plier jaw and made it with the top edge of the fork. Okay, and then I'm going to assign the distance between these two jaws as 0 0.01 inches. So I'm going to select this face and the other face and then assign the distance of 0 0.01 inches. So they're not directly in contact with each other. Otherwise that contact will be identified by the SOLIDWORKS and then we will have to uh, provide some explanation for that. So just keep a very small distance there so that the contact is not automatically identified by the SOLIDWORKS as the interference. Then click OK. And that makes the assembly complete. Okay, so you can see that it says it's fully defined. Uh, the assembly is complete and now we can take this plier jaw um, to the simulation. All right, so now let's go to simulation study. We're going to start a new study. Click OK. 
the first thing we're going to do is assign the material. So the fork is assigned as the um, malleable cast iron. Let's apply. And then the pin and the plier jaw, uh, these parts are assigned as the alloy steel SS. Okay, and then apply and then close. So once we define the materials, let's go ahead and quickly assign the boundary conditions and then we will uh, worry about the contacts, the different kind of contacts that we have in this assembly. So um, let's go ahead to the fixtures and then click on the fixed geometry. So in this case, the two circular faces of the pins on either side as well as this circular face of the fork, all these three faces are fixed. All right, and then uh, the force. So we're gonna right click on the external loads, click on the force, and I'm gonna click on the top face and the bottom face of the other half of the plier jaw. And I'm gonna use the units of inches pound system and then apply the force of five pound force on both sides uh, and make sure that it's per item. Otherwise, if you wanna distribute that five pound force between these two surfaces, then you can just click on the total so that it gets 2.5 and 2.5. But otherwise, if you use the per item as the default option, then five pounds from, from the top and then five pounds from the bottom is how the force is applied. Okay, uh, then click okay. And now we're going to look at the contact set. So very similar to the one problem, uh, you know, that we practiced uh, in the past when we were preparing for the certification exam, uh, we would need to create the contact sets. So right click on the component contacts and then click on the contact set. So here we will have to define if the uh, contact is having the no penetration or bonded or can allow the penetration or is it a shrink fit or virtual wall so you know typically we you know for for these type of problems we're going to use the no penetration which means that the parts are free to separate from one another um, but you know they're not going to be uh, bonded permanently uh, or you know if uh, uh, the forces are applied in such a way that it causes the separation then it will be allowed in this case so no penetration is the contact we're going to use for all the surface contacts that we will be defining it here so the first uh, pair of contact is uh, the face of the lower jaw and the flat face oh sorry uh, make sure that we click on the other input window to create the contact between them I'm going to click OK and I'm going to repeat this procedure for the upper plier jaw as well. And then click on the uh, contact for between them as the no penetration. And then the third one we need to define the contact between the pin and the inner cylindrical faces of the uh, plier jaws. Okay. Uh, we can also you know look at it by going into evaluate and click on the interference detection uh, for this assembly and if we click on the option that says treat coincidence as the interference and let it calculate you can see that there are four interferences identified uh, by the solidworks so you can you know take a look at this one by one so that's so this contact we have already defined as no penetration the um, this contact also we have defined as the no penetration so remaining two contacts here is one here and one there so the other um, you know half of uh, the uh, pin is having an interference with the one of the plier jaws and then um, where is this so this side is having an interference with this left side plier jaw and then the right side of the plier jaw. 
So these two interferences now we need to take care of and then define the contacts uh, between them. Okay, So it's always a good idea to look at the interference detection and see how many uh, components are in contact with one another and are causing the interference that we want to uh, define the contact sets for them. So I'm going to right click on the contact set and uh, create uh, another contact set between you know these two now uh, the one which were identified by the interference detection uh, but I cannot really select the inner cylindrical uh, face of the plier jaws so for that purpose I will have to uh, hide this pin component so for uh, this input window and first thing that I'm going to do is select the uh, you know this outer cylindrical face of the pin and then for the surface in contact with it is uh, something that I cannot select it right now because it's not visible so I'm gonna um, right click uh, or rather yeah, let me let me do this one more time so here it is and then I'm gonna select here the next input and for the pin uh, I'm gonna hide it by right clicking on the pin and once I hide it, uh, then I can select those two uh, faces between the two, uh, you know, these two plier jaws. Okay, so this is the surface outside cylindrical face of the pin, and these are the two inner cylindrical faces of the plier jaws. So they're having again the no penetration contact. So I'm going to click OK here. Um, just gonna go to make sure that the pin is uh, you know again uh, visible uh, there are different ways to uh, you know do that uh, just see whichever way is easier for you so I'm gonna right click here and then show component so the pin is displayed back again in the simulation window and so once we have decided decided and defined all the contacts as we wanted uh, then the time to uh, come to the mesh so I'm going to click on create mesh uh, for a parts you know complicated uh, geometries like this uh, we can always uh, go to the mesh parameters if there are too many curvatures we can use the curvature based mesh or we can use the blended one if you have a lot of uh, planar faces and the cylindrical faces but here we can use the standard mesh and instead of 0 0.14 uh, as the element size I can use let's say 0 0.15 and based on that it adjusts it to 0 0.0075 um, inches as the tolerance for that and then I'm going to click OK for creating the mesh okay you can again go ahead and uh, use the mesh control to refine the mesh size at the regions where you have, uh, you know, when, where you are expecting uh, high stress concentration. But let's first uh, do a quick run of this uh, simulation and then uh, see if we get reliable results. And if you get the results as you intended, uh, then you can always go back and change the. <clears throat> mesh size. Okay, so it took me more than a minute to complete this simulation. Uh, depending on the computational speed and the size of the mesh, uh, you know, your computational time could be different. Uh, but again, just quickly looking at this result, and obviously you can see that there are higher levels of stresses uh, in the region where there is a bend uh, in the fork, as you can see from these uh, results as well. Uh, first, quickly do the animation and uh, then see if you have the um, accurate representation of the simulation. And, you know, it seems to have solve this uh, problem accurately enough uh, we don't really know about the numbers but certainly from the qualitative aspects the simulation seems to have uh, done a, a fairly 
well job as you can see that there are a lot of high levels of stresses coming around here uh, near the region where there is a bend in this fork and the extension is attached to the fork around that region which is quite expected and uh, that's basically the first indication that your simulation is uh, running well all right uh, the other you know quickly looking at a uh, couple of other things here in such type of uh, contact analysis you can always uh, you know right click uh, on the results and uh, click on define stress plot and you can always use the uh, contact pressure to plot it so if I use this as a PSI make sure that uh, the vector plot is indicated and the true scale is also indicated when we create the contact pressure um, under the chart options I'm going to show the max uh, annotation because uh, I'm interested to know where is the most uh, contact pressure is being induced in this problem because of that applied force um, also in the settings uh, you may want to use this as the uh, mesh or not you know, it doesn't matter uh, unless you want to probe it so once I create the uh, you know the contact pressure plot uh, you can notice that the maximum contact pressure is uh, seems to be coming here it really depends on uh, you know your problem uh, that you know some of the times uh, you know depending on how the forces are applied you may get the maximum contact pressure around the region where the pin is also uh, attached to the plier jaws so you can identify the areas where the maximum contact pressures are uh, indicated in the problem all right so that's uh, pretty much for the static contact analysis uh, and then uh, we'll see you in the next video